All righty. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight, everyone. Wherever you're coming from, I know you could be doing anything else on a Tuesday evening. You decided to join us here virtually to learn more about Hamilton College. My name is Eric Redonia. I'm one of the assistant deans of admission here at Hamilton. I'm super excited to meet all of you, as I know that you are prospective students, excited to learn more about Hamilton and all the great things that this institution has to offer. Um, academics, social life, you know, financial aid, all that good stuff. But tonight, we definitely want to talk about the community that exists here on our campus. So again, thank you for taking time out of your schedules to be with us tonight. And we know that community is such a core tenet to the culture here on our campus. It's something that as a Hamilton community, we really value and prioritize not only amongst our student body, but also our staff and our faculty. So I'm excited to have this great panel, group of panelists who are gonna uh, sit with here to us tonight to talk more about Hamilton College. And again, all the things that make this uh, institution super special, super unique, uh, super distinctive. We hope that this conversation helps you learn more about our inclusive community at Hamilton and understand why we chose Hamilton as our home, whether we are a staff or student. Um, so we're going to go ahead and kick off our panel. We'll start off with introductions of all of our panelists. And so as I mentioned, my name is Eric Redonia. I'm one of the admissions officers that works here uh, in our admissions office. I read for a variety of regions in uh, the state or in the United States, but again, super excited to meet all of you coming from all over the country, all over the world. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send it out to Tessa. Hey everyone, my name is Tessa Shafalo. I am the Assistant Dean of Students for Student Engagement at Hamilton. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And in my role, I run our orientation program, both on-campus orientation and a branch of orientation uh, trips that we do that are off-campus. I'll talk about those later. I run our first-year experience program, and then I supervise the Office of Student Activities that does a very wide array of programming and student organization engagement and other things on campus. Thank you, Tessa. Connor, do you want to start us off? Yeah, absolutely. My name is uh, Connor McManus. I am a senior here at Hamilton, he, him pronouns. I'm originally from Syracuse, New York. And here at Hamilton, I study neuroscience and creative writing. Uh, on campus, I am working as a senior admissions fellow, but I also run varsity cross country track and field, and I'm the head editor of the daily newspaper. Awesome. And then Jade, do you want to end us off? Of course. Okay, so my name is Jade. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a rising sophomore, so class of 2025. Um, hometown is Edgewood, New Mexico. Um, planning on majoring in environmental studies, maybe a minor in like economics, Spanish, or anthropology. Haven't quite decided yet. Um, and then on campus, other than tour guiding, which is what I'm doing this summer, I also work at the library. Um, I am a concert coordinator for the Campus Activities Board, and I am a trivia host. I post pub trivia um, every Tuesday night on campus. Awesome. Thank you. So Tessa, Connor, Jade, thank you so much for being part of our panel tonight. Um, we've actually prepared some questions that we're often asked as Hamilton community members. Um, but if there is a question that we um, that sparks in your in your mind as we continue to talk more about Hamilton, for you students out there watching at home, please feel free to use the Q&A function down below to ask all of our questions. Uh, one of my colleagues, Kaylin Oliver, who's also an admissions officer here in our office, will be responding behind the scenes to all of your questions. Um, so please feel free to listen and hear how great Tessa, Connor, and Jade's experience have been here on campus. Um, but also if you have any other lingering questions or anything that comes to mind, please feel free to use that function as well. Again, we want to make sure that you leave this panel feeling the most informed about whether or not Hamilton is the best fit for you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So my first question is going to be thrown to all of our panelists, and it really is to talk about what drew you to Hamilton, right? For students, how did Hamilton make it to your college list? And what was that college search pr process like? And then for Tessa, you know, what, what about that community stood out to you so that you'd want to join? Um, Jay, do you want to start us off? Sure, yeah. Um, honestly, like what drew me to Hamilton when I was like looking at my colleges, um, my college list, I had no idea what I wanted to study. And so um, open curriculum was a big factor to me, but also community. I went to a really small high school. And so I believe I had about 74 students in my graduating class. So I knew everybody. And so I kind of wanted to keep that sense of community when I came to college. And so I was looking for a place that would be very much tight knit, but also a lot of things that I could do on campus, ways to meet new people. And so definitely found that lots of different clubs and activities to join here. And so um, community was a big factor for me. And that's kind of why I'm at Hamilton. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Jade. Uh, what about you, Connor? What was that process like and, and how did you ultimately choose Hamilton? 
Yeah, I, I really wanted the liberal arts experience. Uh, I have a lot of diverse interests, uh, both in the classroom and out of it. And I really wanted to explore it at the highest level. And I think, you know, due in part to Hamilton's open curriculum, but also just being a liberal arts university in general was one of those things that really put it on the map for me. Um, I live about an hour away from here, so it was always somewhat on my radar. But once I visited campus, it truly stood out to me, just the info session, the tour, how beautiful the campus was, and, and it stuck with me. And that's a big reason why I'm here today. Yeah, and that's really awesome. Jade coming from New Mexico, Connor coming from an hour away, like you said, you, you were still both able to find that community. So I'm, I'm curious, Tessa, what was that like for you finding that community here on campus? Yeah, absolutely. When I think of what drew me to Hamilton, I would say at least half of it was the community experience on campus. You know, there's certain things about my job, of course, that were appealing, but, um, you know, I remember coming for my campus visit and just being really impressed with how open and friendly everyone was, how you can walk around campus and people will look you in the eye and say hello to you. And for me, that has applied, that sense of community has really applied to both the um, faculty and staff on campus, but also to the students, right? I love working at Hamilton. I am entering my ninth year now at Hamilton. Um, and I love working here because I really enjoy working with our students who are sharp and super intelligent and really deeply engaged on campus, right? And passionate about the things that they do, both inside and outside the classroom. Um, but I also really enjoy working with my coworkers in the administrative and staff and faculty um, positions on campus who are equally dedicated to the student experience. As a really small campus, I think people come to Hamilton because they care about students, right? They certainly care about the specific work they do, but really want to be engaged members of this community. And that is definitely part of what has kept me at Hamilton also. Awesome. I love that, Tessa. Thank you so much. Um, I, we've talked about community being a really distinctive feature, but I also know one of the biggest you know, or one of the most, you know, distinguishing features about Hamilton and the way we do academics here is our open curriculum, right? Um, that means that there are no distribution requirements, there are no core classes. So for, for Connor, for Jade, can you talk about what that means for you? And, and can you share how you've maximized the open curriculum during your Hamilton experience? Connor, do you want to kick us off? Sure, yeah, <laughs> who's going to draw first? Um, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I mentioned that I, I have a lot of different interests. Uh, you know, I'm majoring in neuroscience, but I'm minoring in creative writing. And that was both two areas of study that I, I really didn't consider when I was uh, applying to school. I really wanted to just do bio. Um, but since then, I've kind of branched off into neuroscience, which has really interested me being a lot more psychology as well as biology, but also creative writing, which at the time was just a hobby. I just liked writing and then was able to take a couple classes and really expand on it in the classroom. Um, and I think that just because I've had so much time to take these classes to explore these other opportunities um, and I wasn't taking like a math class. I remember I was dread math in high school, but I haven't taken a math class here at Hamilton. So I'm uh, pretty happy about that as well. Awesome. And what about you, Jade? How's your experience been like navigating the open curriculum? Yeah, um, honestly, like my first year was great. Honestly, like the open curriculum has given me so many opportunities to really explore what I was interested in. And so um, honestly, like when I came to college, I already told you guys, but I really wasn't sure what I wanted to study. And so that was a big factor in like college decisions. Um, really didn't want to take classes I wasn't interested in. I went through that in high school. And so um, the open curriculum was super appealing. And so my first year I took like nine classes eight of them were like all around departments at hamilton and so i took government i took philosophy i took computer science chinese spanish and so all of those are just so like vastly different and so um that exploration time was great and now like i'm an environmental studies major took a class really loved it um but i also learned a little bit more about myself as well and i was like yeah like i really am not crazy about computer science and like I don't think I'm ever going to want to take chemistry here and that's totally okay and so um, open curriculum has definitely given me like so much in terms of um, learning more about myself what I'm interested in maybe what I'm not too interested in as well. So, yeah. Awesome and I, and I love to hear that you've really been able to have that academic freedom right there it really is a freeing liberating way to do academics at an undergraduate institution and I think we see that in our numbers you know 
20% of our Hamilton students will double major during their time here on campus. And, and students really do have that, that agency to kind of dip their toe into all those different disciplines and get that liberal arts education that they're so, so excited for. So again, open curriculum, just one of the most distinctive features about our campus. Um, in that same line, you know, when we think of academics here on campus, we also think of, you know, small student body, we have a student body of about 2000 students and so students to faculty ratios nine to one average class size is anywhere from 15 to 20 students. Um, so for Connor and Jade, can you talk about what that student to faculty relationship is like in the classroom and can you talk about, you know, some of the advisors that you also have um, outside of those of those faculty members. Um, Jade, do you want to start us off. Yeah, sure. So um, with the small class sizes, even um, largest class here is 40 students. And even in those like professors like are really eager to just get to know you outside of the classroom. And so like never had the professors not know my name by the first week in every single class I've been in here. Um, but honestly, like professors, great people, like they have their open office hours, like you could just go sit and chat about the class, you could chat about whatever. And so that's how I'm ended up like chicken sitting for my professor this um, this week. And so you really create those connections here with your professors. They love to get to know students. Also like what you're interested in beyond, you know, whatever class you're in with them. And so um, quite frankly, like you're gonna create these like awesome relationships with your professors. I went to lunch with my Chinese professor from my freshman fall um, last week. And so um, even though I didn't take a class with her this upcoming, I mean, this past semester, like was still able to kind of she reached out she was like I know you're on campus for the summer like let's grab a meal and so I really love that professors are like an awesome resource for you and so I talked about how community was really important but like the community also in the faculty and your professors is also amazing so they're always here for you um, and then in terms of advising like every student here is also assigned an academic advisor um, during their first year and so that's a faculty member here traditionally a professor from like one of your first year fall courses. And so um, mine was a great resource for me in choosing classes, making sure I liked all the classes I was taking. And so that's kind of how I utilized my academic advisor so far, but um, yeah. Awesome, Jade. And just to clarify, you know, sometimes your professors might ask you to babysit their children. Sometimes they might ask you to chicken sit. And so Jade is chicken sitting for a, a four hens for her professor, which is, again, an extension of that community. Uh, Connor, can you talk about your experience with your professors, what that community is like, that, um, that community with your advisors as well? Yeah, uh, one of the things that has just continued to blow me away by basically every faculty here at Hamilton is just how naturally interested and passionate they are about the things that they're teaching. Um, and I think one of the best ways that they demonstrate that is by doing their own research, right? A lot of the faculty, I, I believe most of them, or if not all, are doing their own research in their in their field of subject or field of study. And that that's like really cool for me. Uh, I, I enjoy listening to them talk about how their research plays into what they're teaching, whether it's an intro class or something on the higher level end end of it. Um, and that's, that's always, like I said, just continuously surprised me. Um, but I guess it shouldn't. It, it's, it's pretty, pretty characteristic of them at this point. Um, and as for advisors, uh, you know, one of the cool things about advising here at Hamilton is once you declare your major, you get to choose another advisor within your major. Um, and that's been super helpful for me as I'm trying to navigate my senior capstone project and trying to find internships, jobs, everything for next year, um, do my own research. So it's been really great, as I mentioned earlier, talking to somebody who's in the field, who has these connections in the field, and who has done it before. Um, and it, it's great to use them as a resource, absolutely. Yeah, awesome. And when we think about advising, we think about, you know, the three advisors that every single student has before they even step it onto campus. That includes your academic advisor, like Connor and Jade have mentioned, that includes your career advisor, but that also includes your Alex advisor. So Tessa, I'm curious, can you just talk about what Alex advising is? What does it stand for? What does it mean? All that good stuff? Sure. So the Alex program at Hamilton is, I think, about two or three years old at this point, and this past year was really the major launch of it. And it is um, kind of a, a holistic approach to advising. So Alex stands for Advise, Learn, Experience. So that EX at the end is for experience. Um, and it encompasses a lot of our campus resources. So one of those is the Alex Advisors. There is a team of five individuals, and every student is assigned one of these Alex Advisors in addition to their faculty advisors. 
supervisor. And this was new most recently for the class of 2025, the class of 2026 will participate, the class of 2027, of course. And it's really another um, professional staff member, another advisor at the college who is there to kind of help you navigate your own personal path as you make your way through Hamilton, right? So they can help in terms of academic things or questions that you have. They can help a little bit with your career path. They can really collaborate with some of the other people who are on your advising team, like your faculty advisor and career advisor. Um, but they're really there for you to help really answer any questions you have, especially questions that you don't know where else to take them, right? So you can talk to your Alex advisor and if they don't know the answer and they, you know, they can sit down and kind of better understand it from you and help point you in the right direction. Um, there are a lot of other resources that fit under that Alex umbrella also. So our learning centers on campus that includes things like the quantitative and symbolic reasoning center, the writing center. Um, there's other kind of community engagement offices that fit under the Alex umbrella. So a couple of examples there are our community outreach and opportunity program, which is um, largely focused on doing community service projects in the local New Hartford and Utica areas, which are about 15 minutes away from campus. Um, the Levitt Center, which is focused on social innovation and runs some really great on and off campus programs, brings wonderful speakers in. So all of those resources fit under Alex. In terms of advising, it really is largely those Alex advisors and the um, learning centers, the academic resource centers, but there's just kind of a wealth of knowledge and support available within that umbrella, the Alex umbrella. Awesome. Thank you, Tessa. And yeah, when I, when I think of Alex advising, it is a new program on campus. So we're really excited to see how successful and how happy students have been with that extra support and leverage that we that we've offered on campus. And and if you're to think of campus as sort of like a library, your Alex advisors, your librarians, right? They know anything and everything that you need to know to stay connected on campus. Um, so going back to our students, um, just talking about transitioning into that first year experience, what has it been like being a first year? Jade, I know you just finished your first year. Connor, I'm sure that felt like years ago, but what was that first year experience like? And, and how do you find your community and meet other students on campus when you first join us on campus? Connor, do you wanna start us off? Sure. I, like you said, it was it was a pretty long time ago. The world looked a little bit different back when I was a first year. Um, but I, I think that that was uh, a little bit just like, you know, I, saying normal feels kind of, you know, overplayed at this point. But it was certainly a lot of uh, going door to door on my, my freshman dorm and saying hi to people. It was one of the first ways that I met some of my closest friends even to this day. But no, I think one of the best things that Hamilton does is their first year experience in the programming that goes along with that. I think one of my favorite mem memories from that year was the first year dance that our campus activity board put together. And that was that was really cool because you got to meet everybody. Um, and I guess that's one of the best uh, or one of the main purposes of those first year events is getting to meet the people that you're going to be, you know, in classes with and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And Jade, you know, you're, you're about to start your second year, but reflecting on what this last year has been like, what was that experience like for you integrating into that community? Yeah, honestly, like, of course, I feel like every college student says this, but like, I was so scared that I wasn't going to make friends when I came here just because I was like, from so far away. But honestly, like, the second I got here, I was a little bit nervous, but we all have orientation trips. And so I feel like Tessa is going to talk more about that. But basically, that's where I met some of my closest friends at Hamilton, like the people that I still um, am super close with today um, are were on my orientation trip. And then you come back, you meet like your roommates orientation group. And so that's how I got even more friends. And so honestly, that whole experience was amazing. That's like some of my fondest memories of my first year, uh, my orientation trip. But then like on campus orientation, you just meet all these new people. And so that was great. But then also like I found a lot of community through classes, surprisingly, like um, since the class size is so small here, we'd all like go around, of course, first week, like you say your name, it's syllabus week, not that crazy. And so really you're just get, kind of getting to know the people in your classes. And so through that, I've made a lot of great friends and also clubs and activities. And so um, this past semester, I was like, you know what, I'm going to sign up for like every club. Like, I just really want to be involved and try a bunch of different new things. And so um, signed up for a bunch of clubs, went to meetings. And that's also how I've made some great friends, you know, whether it's like super close friends or those people that are like, you pass on the main like Martin's way and you just say hi and do a little wave and a smile or like you just grab lunch. But that's kind of how I've made all of my friends this first year for sure. Yeah, and I, and I love to hear that there's so much 
there's a lot of programming, right, and, and services that really support students, not only in that first year transition, but every single year during their four years here on campus. So Tessa, can you just talk about what those su support services look like outside of the classroom for athletes, for artists, for students overall? Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm really pleased to hear that Connor and Jade had positive experiences with the first year experience and the orientation trips. And Jade, you didn't mention that you are leading an orientation trip this year for the first time, which is really exciting. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about those programs, but also first wanted to address the question about outside the classroom support. So there is, of course, the Alex program. Um, my position is part of the Division of Student Life on campus, and that, in, that division includes many services and resources and supports. And so some examples of that um, are student activities, right, which is all about engagement on campus, the health and counseling center fit within that umbrella as well. And so they are there for students who are looking for a variety of support on campus, whether that's proactive or reactive. Um, there are also just a lot, there's there's academic support actually that falls within the, the division of student life. Um, I would say generally there are resources for students in terms of becoming more engaged on campus, right, if you're at the beginning and you're kind of looking for connection still, which is a really common experience. I'm glad to hear Jade mention that everyone is worried about making friends because everyone is worried about making friends. And I hear that so often and it feels, I think for students, like it's just them, but it's everybody. Um, but there are so many ways to get connected and a lot of supports on campus to help you get to that place too, if you don't find it right away, which is totally fine and normal. Um, there are also a lot of wellness resources. So I listed a couple of them, but there are so many great activities on campus from yoga classes to mindfulness sessions to daily or you know weekly meditations a lot of great programming that happens through the chaplaincy, and then a lot of work and programming focused on inclusion and equity and diversity on campus, right? So our Days Masolo Center is a great example of that. They host a lot of our cultural month programming. They have student organizations that are housed out of that space. Uh, it's really kind of the hub of equity and inclusion programming on campus as well. Um, and then outside of the division of student life, um, you, you know, athletes certainly find a lot of connection and support from their team members, from their, you know, the upper class team members and their coaches. I know there's a really strong community within athletics on campus, not just for the students who directly participate in it as athletes, but for those who attend the events and really get school spirit going at those as well. Um, and then, of course, we have a pretty robust um, outside the classroom life on campus that includes activities driven by students and things like Jade mentioned earlier, participating in CAB, right? Connor is very involved on campus. So there are a lot of things that students generate themselves, which is really fantastic. And then there are other arts programs. There are theater opportunities on campus. There's a lot of music. So there are usually on any given night of the week, there are more things to go to than people to go to them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think students really find that rather than feeling like there's nothing to do, it's really picking what you want to do and how you want to best use your time, but also make sure you're fitting in time for your studies and just relaxation and watching Netflix at the end of the night. Um, so there are many, many supports. And the one thing I'll, I'll um, tag onto at the end here is that, so I do run the first year experience. That's a programming series. Connor spoke specifically to some of the activities that happen in the first year experience. That is designed, in addition to the orientation trips, the FYE, first year experience is designed specifically to provide more social opportunities, more connections to resources for new students. And it's a lot just about having fun and coming out and having more opportunities to meet people. So we do trivia night, uh, we'll do panels that kind of help students when they're gearing up to register for classes for their second semester on campus. We do informational panels about um, housing and all this is where you can learn from other students about their experience. We also do a few off-campus trips like going to the nearby Apple Orchard in the fall and going to the Clinton Cider Mill, which if you've been to Clinton or haven't been yet, make sure you go there, but it's very popular. Um, they have really great apple cider donuts. So we have a lot of ways to get students connected, get both on and off campus, and all of that is totally free for students and kind of a major feature of the transition to campus. Awesome. Thank you, Tessa. Thank you. Um, another thing that, you know, we definitely want to touch, touch upon is, is experiential learning, right? When we think about the the learning that goes on inside the classroom there's also this this big commitment to learning by doing right or that or those hands-on experiences that students get really really excited about whether that's research internships um you know tessa mentioned the levitt center and a lot of students do a lot of great work through one of those resource centers on our campus so um 
for all, all panelists, can we just talk about what those opportunities like, what kind of opportunities have you been able to find yourself through research, internships, all that good stuff? Um, Jay, do you, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Yeah. So I am a rising sophomore, so I haven't really um, participated in like internships or any like things through the Levitt Center yet. But um, honestly, in terms of experiential learning, I feel like my tour guiding job can kind of speak to that. Honestly, like um, before I came to Hamilton, terrible public speaker. Um, and so I could never like see myself ever giving tours of campus because like sometimes these groups are huge. But um, honestly, like I just decided to apply one day. I was like, yeah, like might as well give it a shot. It looks like it could be fun this summer. And so now like tour guiding, speaking to so many people per day. And so um, honestly, that's been really great for me to kind of be able to like get out there a little bit, um, try my public speaking skills. Hopefully by the end of the summer, they're pretty honed um, compared to where I was maybe like last summer. But I feel like that was an experience that has definitely like um, taught me new things. And um, now hopefully I'm a decent public speaker. Um, You'll have to ask my tours though. <laughs> no, Jade. I mean, we we see your tours all the time, and, and you're the best. You're awesome. I, you know, visitors love you, and 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 I really like you know connecting that communication value, right? That is so important to the Hamilton community, and being able to work on that through the the job experience you be able to have. I, I really love that. So thank you for that, uh, Connor. What about you? What has experiential look, learning looked like for you during your your three years now fourth year here on campus? Sure, uh, I'll echo Jade's statement that uh, I was also somebody who could never see themselves, you know, speaking to a group of 100 panelists, let alone just doing that for a job every day. Um, <laughs> so it certainly it speaks to three years of a Hamilton communication driven uh, uh, education. But one of the uh, in terms of the experimental learning that I've had uh, early on in my Hamilton career was the uh, I worked in a lab in, in the biology department. So I was doing research for one of the bio biology professors. It was a uh, laboratory on plant fossils. So that was not the most interesting thing in the world. I, I, I don't, you know, looking at plants under the microscope, I'll never claim it to be, but uh, <laughs> it certainly was great to get into the lab and to have that experience because now I can talk about it. Now I, you know, know my way around a microscope, um, which is uh, going to help me out in the long run, especially as I, I look to do more things in the STEM field post Hamilton. Nice. And then Tessa, can, can we just talk about some of the other opportunities or maybe students you've met, stories you've heard of some really great opportunities for that experiential learning? Yeah, I do think some of the things I mentioned earlier, both Community Outreach and Opportunity Project and the Levitt are two really great examples of opportunities to for experiential learning. I think I would also say, like Jade noted, there are so many things that might not on paper look like they fit into that category, but at Hamilton, because of the size of our community, there are, you, you know, you're, you're very infrequently as a student kind of a passenger, right? You often get to play an active role in the things that you're involved in on campus. And sometimes that even means creating your own solution or program or, you know, creative idea when it doesn't exist otherwise. And I would certainly argue that there's a lot of experiential learning to be done there, kind of tackling a project and taking it from idea to implementation. Um, in Levitt and the COOP, uh, so Levitt has a few programs like, um, they do in January a really hands-on kind of intensive week where students work on their own social innovation projects and propose ideas at the end of that. There are students that do community connections directly through Levitt, whether that is outside of the area, but also a lot of work right in Clinton and nearby Utica, right, working with the communities there, whether that's the refugee populations or youth who are in the community. Um, so there's a lot of hands-on work where students will generate the ideas in most cases and be supported by the Levitt staff to bring those to fruition, where they are maybe doing research or advocating for needs that exist in the community or just getting to know the community better and how Hamilton can be a good partner. Um, and the, the COOP is similar. So we, um, and actually I work closely with the director of the Community Outreach and Opportunity Project through orientation because a branch of our orientation projects are service oriented. And so there are so many opportunities, whether that's going down into the village of Clinton to the school to work directly with some of the elementary age children who are there to do tutoring, um, going into nearby Utica again to work in some of the community centers that exist there, whether that is with children or again with some of our um, refugee populations that are there or with um, 
there's just a wide variety of community services there actually. They're, they've done similar projects to like Habitat for Humanity and construction projects as well. Um, there's environmental service projects. So there's really a wide range of opportunities in addition to internships and jo campus jobs and things like that that we've talked about a little bit to not only do work and learning that is very hands-on and experiential, but also just to make an impact in the community that you're gonna be part of for four years. Totally, totally. Thank you for that, Tessa. Um, so thinking about your Hamilton experience, a big part of that is, is studying what you love, right? It's, it's exploring those passions inside the classroom. And I think, you know, when you think about the 30, 40 plus courses you'd be taking as a Hamilton student throughout your four years, that's a lot of learning and a lot of great classes offered by great professors. And so we often get questions from students for our students about what is your favorite class? What has been your favorite class? So Connor, Jade, can you speak to what that class is? What that experience was like? What did you enjoy so much about your favorite class? Uh, Connor, do you wanna start us off? Yeah, my uh, my favorite class was in the bio department. It was a class called Invertebrate Physiology taught by Professor Reynolds. Um, I like this class in particular just because, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, just how passionate Professor Reynolds was about these invertebrates. And, you know, those are sponges and other not very interesting creatures. But for whatever reason, we were super engrossed in uh, all of these different organisms. And that was really cool because uh, it was something that I had never really considered learning about before. Um, and as I said, Professor Reynolds just did a really good job of getting us interested. Uh, so that was the lecture portion. And then uh, in the afternoon, once a week, we'd have the lab portion of it, which is was focused on um, instead of, you know, the traditional chemistry, pouring stuff into lab tubes, it was more so we go in, we look at these animals, uh, specifically like starfish, or uh, I have a really cool picture of me holding a tarantula in my hands, um, but drawing them and getting to look at them firsthand. And I think that that hands-on experience was a really cool addition to this class that was really just focused on being in the classroom. Um, so I broke it up pretty nicely. Nice. And Jade, what about you? What's been your favorite class so far? Yeah, um, also can't believe I forgot to mention this earlier, but I did volunteer with Coop and build houses for Habitat, <laughs> but um, can't believe I forgot to mention that. But my favorite class at Hamilton, um, I feel like I said this in an earlier panel about the open curriculum, but I really loved my philosophy class um, this past spring semester. It was environmental ethics. And so that's kind of what made me realize, you know, like maybe I do wanna be environmental studies major. And so um, in high school, I told my philosophy teacher that I was never going to take philosophy again. I thought it was like the worst. I thought it was so boring, but I feel like at Hamilton, like I really like um, just the environment really made me realize that I should like still keep an open mind about things. And so I was like, you know what? Like I'll give this another shot. I'll give it another go. Met with the professor. He um, kind of gave me the rundown of what the class is gonna look like because I decided to add it as my fifth course on this past spring. And so he really helped me out with that, but it was a great class. It was a lot of like modern philosophy. So not, um, you know, super boring, like Plato and um, stuff written, you know, ages ago, but it was a great class. It's the professor that I'm actually chicken sitting for this week, um, but he baked us cookies. We had a great time. Everyone signed up and everyone was ready to like be there and talk about philosophy every morning. So that was just a great like 9 a.m. class that I took. Nice. Awesome. Sounds like those sound like very interesting classes and I'm sure they were. Um, awesome. Thank you both Connor and Jade. Um, so this next question is going to be for Jade specifically. When Jade introduced herself earlier in this panel, she had mentioned that she's from New Mexico, right? So not the East Coast, not the Northeast area. So from far, far away. And, and when we think about joining a college community, you also have to think about joining the community at large, right? So location is a huge factor for a lot of prospective students. And, and although there's so much to rave about where we were located, right? You know, four hours away from New York and Boston. We're also at the foot of the Adirondack Mountain Range, which is the largest state park in the entire country. There's so much, there's so much, so many cool things to think about when thinking about going to school in Clinton. But for a student like Jade coming from the other side of the country, you know, what has that transition been like for you coming from so far, far away? Yeah, so I know my home state is definitely not like a hop, skip and a jump. Um, I actually <laughs> just booked my flight back home today um, for the winter break. But honestly, like, I really wanted to go out of state for college. And so, you know, New Mexico, it's it's definitely, 
it's something. Um, honestly, my tours always tell me they love it there. I'm like, oh, really? But um, I guess that's just what you say when you're from there. Um, but honestly, like coming to upstate New York was great. Um, the leaves here change colors like they do in the movies. It's real. Um, apple picking is huge. And so I honestly love the whole like different opportunities up here. Like for um, spring break, I went to Boston for the first time, heard great things about the city, got to experience that myself. And so that was amazing. Um, the winter, that was definitely a transition, definitely an adjustment for me. Um, very cold, but honestly, I got used to it, learned about so many more like winter activities here. And so skiing's pretty big. Um, sledding is huge, like snowshoeing in the glens on campus. And so being able to participate in a whole different like um, kind of like <laughs> a whole different like um, set of activities outside was like so crazy to me. And so um, definitely like love upstate New York now, big fan. At first I was a little nervous because I was like, wow, Hamilton's really in the middle of nowhere. But honestly, great location, gave me so many more opportunities to try new things and stuff, yeah. Totally. And I totally feel you on that culture shock, Jade. I'm originally from Los Angeles, and so I had never seen snow until I moved out here to the East Coast. So it is it is that surreal feeling of, wow, what a new environment, but what a new way to experience life. And to do that with a college community, I think, gets really, really exciting for students coming from nearby or from all over the world. Um, so thank you for that, Jade. And then for Connor and Tessa, who have lived in the area um, for, for most of their life, can you talk about the, the surrounding village of Clinton, right? And then also what's available in the surrounding uh, area overall. Um, Connor, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, I mean, I can start in Syracuse, which is where a, a lot of people fly into. Um, it's a pretty small city. That's, like I said, where I'm originally from. Um, but it, it's it's a nice airport, I guess, is the best thing to say about it. And it's pretty close. Um, and then once you do get into Clinton, um, it's, it's your perfect picturesque little town, a uh, little village. Um, there's a lot to do if you have a keen eye for it. Um, I'm a frequent flyer at the town coffee shop, Utica Coffee, um, which is based in Utica as well. So it's it's just right nearby. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would say it's a it's a very beautiful area. Yeah. And what about you, Tessa? What's, what's it like living in Clinton? Sure. Um, so I'm actually from Syracuse too, but of course have spent a lot of time in the Clinton area. Um, I'll, I'd certainly echo some of what Jade and Connor have said. You know, one spot that I really love in the area is the Glens, which is right on campus and easily accessible by students. There's a lot of great trails that are good for both kind of really easygoing and more intense walks and hikes if you're interested in kind of a nice way to clear your head in the middle of the day or on the weekend. Um, I also really love frequenting the coffee shop nearby but I also go into New Hartford a lot. I spend time in Utica and I just like the diversity of activities and kind of the further you, you know, you can kind of pick, do you want to stay really close by in Clinton, which is just a few minutes down the hill. I actually like to walk down. I might be a little, might be rare in that, that I like to walk down and then walk back up our very steep hill onto campus. <laughs> um, but it is, it's just a really nice small community. There are shops there. I really enjoy sitting on the green in town. There's another beautiful park that's right outside. As you can see, I like to be outside. Um, but I also also really like going into Utica. There is a lovely art museum in there called Munson Williams Proctor Art Institute that has wonderful exhibits. There's theater there. There are great restaurants to check out. Um, so there's just a lot of, there are a lot of things to do again, depending on how far you want to venture from campus. And there are also some shuttles that take our students there again for free. So you can access a lot of this as a student, whether that's right in Clinton or in nearby New Hartford, which is just like a 10 to 15 minute drive. There are plenty of opportunities to experience what all that the area has to offer. Awesome. Thank you. And, and I, I love being able to have, you know, Clinton, New Hartford, Utica sort of serve as like a, a playground for our students to be able to explore and, and, and learn some really cool things, meet some really cool people. Um, and I think a big part of it is that because, you know, we are such a small community, we, we love to be able to have that access. But I think I've noticed on campus that because we are a small community, a lot of things are going on on campus, right? Um, and, and one thing or a way we see that community flourish is because you know, here at Hamilton, we are a fully residential college, meaning that for all four years, 100% of students are living on campus. And so my next question for, for all of you is to talk about that residential life experience. What are the residence halls like, right, for, for our students? And then for Tessa, can you talk about, you know, various programming, RAs, all that good stuff? Connor, do you want to start us off? 
Yeah. Uh, sorry, you're asking about just programming RAs. Uh, residential life. What are the residence halls like? Um, you know, what has it been like living in a variety of different spaces on campus? What is that process like? All that good stuff. Sure. I mean, as the, I guess, longest tenured dorm lover in the chat, um, <laughs> it, it's certainly been nice having a, a bunch of different experiences um, in, in the dorms. Uh, I think the the best park and the hallmark of, you know, living everybody on campus is just being so close. Uh, Hamilton is a very walkable campus, as I heard a visitor say today. It's, it's, it's very nice getting around and it's very quick too. I think you could probably walk 10 minutes in any direction and be at the place that you want to be. And that's really convenient, especially when you're living close by to everybody that you want to get dinner with or want to study with or want to hang out with. And it's really easing that, uh, I guess that sense of community and because you're, you're just close and you know that everybody is going to have the same weather as you and is going to probably have the same commute to you to class so it just like it adds to this kind of shared experience that uh is i guess pretty unique to living all on campus nice and jade what is your what has your experience been like living on a fully residential campus yeah so i'm definitely not as seasoned as connor um <laughs> in terms of residential life but honestly like my first year like housing experience was so positive like Hamilton handpicks all first years of roommate and so based on like your housing preferences like your living style they pick someone who you're gonna very well like coincide with and so um I had a great first year roommate she actually took me back to Cleveland with her during winter break and let me fly out of Cleveland airport and so that was amazing like um I just love my roommate so much but also the people on my floor were great and so we all kind of bonded you know you'd see them in the bathroom brushing their teeth and you'd be like oh like hey <laughs> and then also like RAs with programming and stuff just really kind of foster that community amongst the floor and so I had such a positive first experience I lived in north I had a split double basically like double room but there was like a wall and like a door that kind of divided us and so I loved my situation this upcoming year I'm gonna be living in a suite and so six people in a suite, common room with like a kitchen. And so really looking forward to that, but honestly, like nothing but positive things to say about my housing experience so far. So, yeah. Nice, excited for you, Jade. That sounds like a sweet living situation. That's awesome. And then Tessa, can you speak more to some of the programming that they've talked about? Sure, yeah, we have a pretty wide variety of housing options on campus, which I think is really unique and allows students to find the community that's a good fit for them, right? So for example, even within our first year housing, um, housing stock, we have one of our buildings, which I think houses about 280 students. That's on the largest end. And then we, and that one's right next to the quad. It's near a lot of the athletic facilities. It's really centrally located, but then we have smaller communities that house more like 40 students. We also have, in terms of programming that comes out of the office of residential life, um, I would first say that each building kind of has its own different community style and interests, right? They just, I think people gravitate towards things that are a really good fit for them. And similar to what Jade said, the Office of Residential Life is really good at helping people kind of make some of those decisions, especially in the first year. Um, but in terms of programming, we also have some themed housing. So there is like wellness housing that students can choose. There's substance free housing. We've had a gaming community before. We have a wilderness and outdoor themed community. So there are special interest communities that students can choose from as well. And in those areas, there's a lot of themed programming. So, you know, if you're in the wilderness and out, outdoor community, you're certainly living with students who have shared interests, but your RA is also really well connected. And so that group will go on off campus trips and hikes up into the Adirondacks together, which is this huge park that's about an hour away from campus with lots of mountains to climb and rivers to canoe and things like that. Um, so that's just one example. The mindfulness community is another really popular one. And some of the programming that happens in there is certainly that you're living with people with some shared interests and living styles and preferences says about how they keep their space, but also have the opportunity to have some social connections outside of the classroom, to go off campus and do activities, to have mindfulness sessions together or meditate at the end of the day. Um, but the RAs in every building, regardless of which community you choose, are prepared to not only be a resource for students who you can go and talk to and kind of help answer questions, even if it's not related to housing, the RAs are a great resource just to say like, I am new to campus and I don't know where to start for this question and I want another student's opinion. They are there to answer that type of question for you and point you in the right direction. And then also there to build community. That's one of their biggest jobs. And so they host programming within the buildings, whether that's ice cream socials or things like that. They some in some cases will 
um, set up an off-campus trip where everybody goes to the cider mill, which I know I've already mentioned, um, or goes to the movies or something like that. Um, but there, there's a lot that happens both within and outside of the buildings that's still connected to your own residential experience. Um, so again, I think there's no shortage of things to do or support within those spaces. It's just kind of navigating what's going to be the right fit for you when you get to campus and, and working that out. Totally, totally. Thank you, Tessa. Um, so I know our viewers at home are eager to know about dining on campus, right? What is the food like here at Hamilton? So Tessa, can you speak to maybe meal plans or the various dining halls that we have here on campus? And then I'm, I'm really eager to know, or for Connor and Jade, like what are our favorite meals on campus, favorite dining halls? Um, but Tessa, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. Well, they are definitely going to be better than I am at talking about the best dining halls on campus. I do. I've eaten in all of them, um, but I probably have a more limited experience than they do. Um, so every because we are entirely residential, every first year student is signed up for like, I think, the most robust meal plan that we offer, which gives you a lot of options. Right. Of course, it gives, gives you your three meals a day, but other opportunities to swipe in and to get, you know, kind of a snack here and there. Um, and certainly I suggest that because you don't know necessarily necessarily what you're going to, you know, when you're going to be hungry because you're starting a new experience and on a new schedule. Um, so you'll be signed up for that meal plan. You won't ha really have to take too many steps to adjust that. And then you do have a lot of options. Our two biggest dining halls, our commons dining hall, which is right on the main quad and the and dining hall, they have some different dining options. And I think that's one of the reasons students like them. Um, there's some, you know, kind of, there are a lot of different things that change. There's some stuff that stays the same, like the salad bar will always be there. There. there's pizza but then there's different hot options during the day um McEwen, which um is on the south end of campus also has a lot of locally sourced food which is a nice feature you know there's some different vegetables there that they've got from nearby farms but then we have options like the little pub which serves lunch that people seem to very <laughs> that, that people love um a nice pub lunch there the diner i'm gonna let them talk about the diner because i'm sure they're better they're experts at it more than i am but i like the diner too especially for lunch um and then we've got a couple of other options on campus where they, some are included, but some you can kind of add dollars to your swipe card. And I know students will go there and get coffee. Um, right in our student center, there's a little cafe too with a few options and baked goods and things like that. So there's a pretty wide variety. Um, and I know students also, when there's something that they think is missing and they want to provide feedback, have been able to do that as well. Um, I've, I've worked closely with our dining staff and I know that they are kind of open to conversations with students. If you are looking for something where they can help you support a dietary need that you have or a change or something like that. Awesome, thank you, Tessa. So Connor, Jade, what's our favorite meal? What's our favorite dining hall? What are we, what are we telling all students they need to eat once, once they're a student here at Hamilton? Jade, what, what are you thinking of? All right, so every single tour, I tell every family this, but the Howard Diner is definitely my favorite dining hall on campus. It's on the meal plan. And so I'm there like, there was this time this past semester where I was there for lunch, I think for every day for three weeks. And so <laughs> my friends would be like, all right, so we're gonna get diner sushi because they have a sushi station. So great. Um, and then like on the Wednesdays, I get sushi and then a side of mac and cheese, but they put buffalo sauce in it. And so that's probably like my favorite meal at Hamilton. And so as you can see, I feel very passionately about the Howard Diner. So that's definitely my favorite dining hall for sure. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. And what about you, Connor? Yeah, the diner is, is awesome because it's it's right in the middle of campus. I think you got to walk to it both ways, whether I'm going to my dorm or don't, going to class. So it's certainly nice little halfway point um and I, I use it as such as a, like a nice little checkpoint and get something as i'm passing through almost every time but i think uh commons especially is just there's just a lot to get there um so i'll probably go in and get like a plate of chicken and rice and uh, pizza and soup and be able to just have myself a nice meal for like 30 minutes or so and just take advantage of it being all you can eat um so yeah, that, that's certainly one of my favorite meals. Awesome. And Eric, if I can add uh, on, uh, Connor will certainly know this too, but some, some of our buildings on campus, especially the suites have kitchens built into them. And so I think students will find that they are more interested in maybe altering their meal plan as they progress towards their senior year because they wanna do more cooked meals together with, um, with students that they live with. Um, but at the beginning, it's the kitchens are not quite as easy to access in some of the first year buildings. And so, and also as you get acclimated to campus, that full meal plan is of course a great option. It gives you all the choices to try everything out like the pub and the diner and things like that. 
Totally. And thank you for adding that, Tessa, because that is something that students get excited about as they have more agency to kind of choose where they live on campus, you know, thinking about kitchen spaces or spaces where they can make their own meals because um, food here on campus is, is really good. Um, awesome. Thank you all. Um, so thinking about this community, right, student life, what, what it's like being a Hamilton student, we think about our student body, right, 2000 students coming from all over the country, all over the world. Um, and we think about how that small size really does em embrace and allow for that community to flourish. Um, so for, for all, of, all of our panelists, can we talk about what that community feels like to you? And can we also specifically talk more about the diversity of our community, right? Again, they're coming from all over the, all over the world, all over the country. And, and I feel like there's, there's, there's such a huge commitment to equity and inclusion here on campus. So for Connor and Jade, how has that looked like as a student? For Tessa, how has that looked like uh, as a staff member? Um, can we just talk about the overall community here on our campus? Uh, Connor, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but just being so close to everybody has really made it easy to just reach out and meet new people, too, is one of the aspects that I, I guess I didn't touch on. Um, you know, Hamilton, I like to say, you see a lot of familiar faces, but you also always see new ones. Um, and that is one of the best parts about it when you're walking down campus and you're able to, to you know, see your friends, but also know that there's also people out there. So it doesn't feel like it's so small that uh, you know everybody. And I guess what goes along with that, too, is everybody here that comes to Hamilton, as Eric said, uh, comes from all over the world. They have very diverse backgrounds, but also very diverse interests. And I guess a hallmark of a Hamilton student that I've, I've come to know is you can probably talk to somebody about whatever they're interested in for hours on end. And it's all about getting to them to talk about what they're interested in is, is the hard part. But uh, it's, it's getting there and being able to you know, express that, like that diverse interest and in the diverse things that they care about um, is definitely the biggest thing for me. Awesome. And Jade, what about you? What does that community look like? What does that diversity of communities on campus look like? And what has your experience been like? Yeah, um, Hamilton community is so great. And so honestly, like I do love that, you know, it's like a 2000 people school and so at first that feels a little small but honestly like I came here and I was like you know what like I've met so many new people I know a lot of students in my class here but also like I'm always finding new faces and so whether I'm like taking a walk down Martin's way I'm like oh I've never seen you before or um, I'm like going to my class I'll find new people joining new clubs different scenes and so honestly I feel like that really speaks to like what Connor said, like diversity of interests as well. And so there's a lot of different spaces where you can just kind of find your place on campus. And then of course you can join those places and find a whole new community of people. And so I think that's really awesome. So I love that there's so many spaces to kind of share your interests. Um, in terms of like the diversity of the community, I do really love that students are coming from all around the world. Um, I think that's really important. Lots of different cultural organization, organizations here as well. And so really excited for like my, friends to um, restart the Asian Student Union next year, really looking forward to that. And so there's lots of different places where you can really find your um, niche here, that's for sure. Yeah, and, and I think as a part of that community, right, we think of Greek life, we think of athletics, we think of arts, we think of outdoors opportunities, bands and concerts that are happening on campus, trivia nights in the pubs. There, there's so many ways to, to spend your weekends and, and stay active on campus. But again, going back to that, that C word community, um, that's so important. So for Tessa, can you talk about that diversity of community, also the diversity of learning styles and different yeah. uh, you know student abilities on campus and what yeah. that support looks like? Right, yeah, I was gonna add that too. I think in the time that I've been at Hamilton, the eight or nine years, I think the community and certainly the student body have grown increasingly more diverse, right? In terms of where people are from, in terms of social identities, right? In terms of socioeconomic background, in terms of interests, in terms of the experiences that students are bringing with them to campus, in terms of learning styles and abilities. And I think that's a fantastic thing for every member of our community. Um, and I, I think we've all spoken pretty extensively to the fact that you can kind of create your own niche community or find your own space on campus. And I think for most students, whether that is something that they, you know, find automatically, maybe with the members of their orientation trip or their residence hall, or they find by joining a student organization, or they find by creating that space for themselves. Um, I think it is, it's certainly possible to find and students will kind of gravitate towards that, especially because of the, we've talked a lot about the size 
it can feel both big and small. Um, but I think, I think the fact that you, that it's not so big that it's impossible to find other people with similar interests and similar backgrounds is a really positive thing as well. And there are a lot of people here to support students in that journey. If that's not, if that doesn't happen for you for your first second on campus. Um, and then in terms of learning styles and abilities, there are also a lot of resources on campus. I think we are a very diverse community in terms of the educational experiences that students have had before they come here, but also in terms of the ways they learn. And the small classroom size is absolutely a benefit there, right? So that your faculty members actually know your name, they get to know you, they can support you in your academic journey alongside those other advisors we spoke to earlier, like your academic advisor and your um, Alex advisor. Um, but then we also have additional resources on campus um, and actually just are expanding or kind of relocating our office of um, accessibility support services, which is fantastic to fit under that Alex office I was talking about earlier. So they'll be really close partners with the learning centers and can help students who need additional time on exams or just need a writing center tutor to help them navigate their first college paper or their 100th college paper, right? I, I think students of all class years and of all experiences make pretty extensive use of these resources. I don't think I've met a student on campus yet who has not gone to some of the academic resource centers, for example. Um, and so I think the, the accessibility of resources here and our size, again, lend themselves to actually accessing them, right? You're not on a huge campus where you can't get an appointment for some of these things. Um, although it's competitive sometimes, so don't make your appointment like the day before your paper is due. <laughs> but, um, but there's a lot, again, of opportunity to, have, to work directly with another human being on campus who you can actually talk to about the way that you learn best and what you want to get out of your experience. Awesome. Thank you, Tessa. Um, so I just want to be mindful of time because we've, we've asked a lot of great questions. I've seen the Q&A and there's a lot of great conversations happening there as well. Um, but I do want to ask one last question, and that's for all of our panelists, just about the college process, right? You know, for Connor and Jade, who have gotten here to Hamilton and now being successful Hamilton students, and for Tessa, who supports a number of students in a number of ways, what piece of advice would you give to these students as they dive into their college search? What is that one thing that you wished you knew before coming to Hamilton? What's something that you want to tell these prospective students thinking about Hamilton? Um, Connor, as, as, our, as our senior here, um, do you want to start us off? Yeah, uh, so I guess I'm a little bit biased. The thing that I would recommend first is come in for an interview or do one of our virtual <laughs> interviews. Um, those are optional, but a great way to demonstrate interest, but also to get to meet you as a, as a person. You know, when you're applying to schools, it's a lot of X and O's and uh, ones and zeros on your transcript. And it's a lot easier to meet somebody and uh, have that on your record. Um, so definitely come in for an interview. You might even do it with me, um, which would be cool. Uh, and then the other thing that I wish I knew when I was applying to school was just spend time doing the things you love and prioritize that over just doing a million things just because I, I think that there's a lot of different draws in your senior year to go and spread yourself too thin. Um, but the, the point would be to spend your time doing the things that are important to you and experience personal growth is, and set yourself up to experience that growth and then be able to talk about it, share the things that are important to you. Um, but yeah, that's my advice. Awesome, thank you, Connor. Wise words, wise words. Uh, Jade, what's your piece of advice? Yeah, um, I suppose my piece of advice for all of you guys out there considering Hamilton, um, also about to go through the college admissions process. Um, one, good luck. It's definitely <laughs> strenuous and you're gonna spend a lot of hours like typing away at the computer, writing essays. But honestly, like I said this in the last panel, but I think I'm gonna say it again because it's pretty important. But honestly, like I think you should really take the time to kind of see what's really important to you, um, what you're gonna prioritize, especially when you get to college, but also like prioritize yourself now and kind of be able to still have that senior year experience, you know, with like finally, hopefully um, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel in the COVID pandemic. And so you guys are hopefully back all in school, but this is like some of the last times you're ever gonna see your peers. And so I think it'll be nice for you guys to kind of sit back, enjoy your senior year. Don't worry too much. like. Um, trust the process kind of thing you'll end up where you're meant to be but um, I think that's a good piece of advice I wish I had when I were applying to colleges. 
Thank you, Jade. And then Tessa, what's what's one thing you wish you knew when applying to college? What 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 should students know as they navigate this process? Mm -hmm. well, Connor and Jade have given brilliant advice already, actually, um, that I'm very impressed by. I think just coming at it with an open mind and just an awareness that at all the the worries that you have, all the things you're wondering about, are first of all totally normal, and second of all you will really have the opportunity to kind of build your own experience as you go into college. And so I think that for me, the best way to learn about things, even still to learn about other colleges, to learn, you know, in my own experience when I was applying to college, but also to learn about programs and things that exist is just to talk to the people, right? So that could be coming on a tour, coming for an interview. It could be talking to other students who you know who've gone somewhere. Or if you're on campus, I would also say don't hesitate to stop anyone that you see and ask them a question about their experience, because I think you're going to get the most genuine feedback in those settings and just learn a lot more about the, um, you know, the place that you're considering. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you for your questions and we hope you enjoyed our, our great conversation today with all of our wonderful panelists. Um, we will be hosting a number of virtual events throughout the summer. So please, um, you know, visit hamilton.edu slash discover to find other conversations about various aspects here in our community. The page will be updated regularly with new content information. Um, so the website's gonna be a great resource for all of you prospective students who want uh, want to learn more about Hamilton. But again, thank you so much. I hope you have a great, rest of your night and stay safe out there, okay? Good night, y'all.